Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. The troubled JAXA Slim mission has taken an unexpected turn for the better after a propulsion failure during descent, after landing on its face, after being unable to gather any power and having to be shut down, Slim has started operating again. It's gathering solar energy, it's charging its batteries, and it is operational. And now JAXA is working against time to get as much accomplished as possible before the Lunar night sets in. All of this and more coming at you on the Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon and once again, welcome to the Angry Astronaut. So I've been following the JAXA Slim mission with a great deal of interest. Haven't done any reporting on it for the most part up to this point. And the reason for that is wasn't really sure as to what was going to happen to it, wasn't really sure as to what the final disposition of the probe was going to be. As all of us probably know, after a long journey, because this was not a probe that made a direct flight to the moon, but rather one of those more gradual orbital approaches that makes use of the Earth's gravity in order to eventually make its way to lunar orbit, requires a lot less thrust to get there using that kind of system. Therefore, you don't need quite as many solid rocket boosters, don't need to have quite as big of a rocket to get you there, etc. So all of that had gone fairly well. And also, Slim had managed to take a number of pictures of the lunar surface before it made its landing attempt. And that's when things started to go south. And in many ways, this bore some similarities to the recent Peregrine mission. Obviously, Peregrine ran into problems a lot earlier in the mission, but nevertheless, kind of the same thing. There was a failure with the propulsion system during the final descent, and that led to the lander essentially flipping onto its side, landing on its nose on the lunar surface. And when that happened, even though the lander was still technically operational, its solar panels were facing in the wrong direction. Again, very much like Peregrine. And without its solar panels facing the right way, well, it was operating off of very limited battery power, only had a few hours of life left, and eventually JAXA shut it down in the hopes that eventually the path of the sun would lead the solar panels in their current kind of less than ideal orientation to pick up some solar energy later on. But many people believed, again, including myself, that communication might never be restored with this craft. Because after all, it didn't make the softest of landings. Who knows what kind of state its operational systems were in, communications, etc. might have been damaged. And on top of all that, the thing lying on its side, how much solar energy is it really going to be able to collect? Well, yesterday... What is nothing less than a miracle took place. Slim has been able to gather enough solar energy to become fully operational once again. And even though it's lying on its side, it was able to deploy both of the rovers that it took along with it to the moon. And these rovers have also been carrying out some work, actually, even before they tried to turn the main lander back on. These rovers have been very busily getting their job done on the lunar surface. And now that SLIM is operational again, JAXA is working against time to get as much work as possible accomplished with this probe before the lunar night sets in. It wasn't designed to survive a lunar night, so JAXA doesn't have a whole lot of time. But nevertheless, it is a miracle that this probe is functioning as well as it is. And again, a testament to just how much engineers can accomplish when they're given an opportunity. Way back on September 7th at 8.42 a.m. Japan Standard Time, the Slim Rover, or Slim Lander rather, was successfully launched together with the X-ray Imaging and Spectroscopy Mission, 
on an H-2A rocket. And that is one reason why this probe had to take the kind of trajectory that it did, because this rocket was not carrying one mission, but two. And so therefore, a direct course to the moon was not all that practical. And so it took what's called a weak stability boundary-like trajectory, which is simply making use of the moon and the Earth's gravity in order to eventually climb from an Earth orbit into a lunar orbit. It took months to accomplish this, but eventually SLIM managed to arrive in a lunar orbit and took quite a number of impressive photographs and other footage of the lunar surface before it started to make its descent on January 19th of 2024. By the way, it was heading towards a place called the Sea of Nectar, south of the Theophilus Crater. And interestingly enough, the Nectarian period of the lunar geologic timescale is named after this region, and it runs from 3.9 billion years ago to about 3.85 billion years ago. We have virtually no geological records of what happened during this time period on Earth because the Earth tends to resurface itself a lot, so any geological information gathered from this region of the moon would tell us a hell of a lot about the ancient history of the solar system, which is one of the reasons why the probe was headed to this region in the first place. Now, as many of you probably know, the SLIM is also called the Lunar Sniper. And the reason it's called that is because it makes use of some extremely advanced facial recognition systems, which are used also to recognize a variety of different lunar craters. And when combined with data collected by the Selene Lunar Orbiter mission, also by JAXA, SLIM was able to set up a very detailed and precise map, which, when combined with its very very precise thruster system would allow it to set down with an accuracy range of 100 meters, as opposed to the Apollo 11, which had an accuracy range of 20 kilometers long and 5 kilometers wide. A big, big difference in terms of precision, and in this regard, SLIM was very successful indeed, setting down less than 50 meters away from where JAXA wanted it to set down. However, after that, everything started to go south because, as near as we can tell, a propulsion nozzle fell off of the lander at the last moment, which led to the lander crashing down on the surface instead of a soft landing. The vehicle didn't fall very far, but it was far enough to cause it to topple over onto its face, again, as near as we can tell, and after that, the solar panels were not oriented in the correct direction for the probe to be able to gather enough energy to function. So it was operating off a few hours worth of battery power, and this status was confirmed by a couple of small baseball-sized rovers that were deployed by the lander just before it landed on the surface. This also was an amazing feat of engineering as these tiny little hopping rovers were tossed down onto the lunar surface before the rover even sat down, and they were able to take this now famous photograph of the probe sitting face down on the lunar surface. And at this point, JAXA started to play catch up. They started to do some damage control, essentially reporting that for the most part, the mission had been a success because SLIM's most important mission as the Moon Sniper was its ability to set down with a precision of less than 100 meters, which it did. However, it was going to be very disappointing if the probe could not regain any power before the lunar night set in, which would be enough to kill the whole thing, given the fact that the probe was not designed to survive a lunar night. So, after a few hours of operation and after taking a few pictures with its spectrographic camera, SLIM was forced to shut down, and there was a great deal of skepticism as to whether or not the probe would ever be able to reactivate, given the fact that it was deactivated with less than 20% left on its battery, and the moon is a very cold place that tends to suck batteries dry if you aren't constantly replenishing them with solar power. And yet, amazingly, on January 28th, Jax's patience paid off. 
Here's the statement that they made at the time. Quote, we immediately started scientific observations with MBC, which is the multi-band camera, and have successfully obtained first light. First light, by the way, refers to the first use of an instrument to take images. MBC, as I said, the multi-band camera, is designed to scour the lunar surface for the composition of olivine. What is that? Well, olivine is a magnesium iron silicate that's generally only found in the Earth's mantle, in other words, in lava. And if any of this is present on the surface of the moon, it indicates that lava may have been ejected from the moon's mantle which may hold some clues as to how the moon formed in the first place and perhaps some of the history of its volcanology. Lots of unanswered questions about the geological history of the moon, and one of the main reasons for this is the fact that the Apollo missions were only able to set down in a limited equatorial region of the moon because that's the only area that was accessible to the Apollo landers of the time. Now these new probes can examine regions of the moon that we've never been able to access before, especially extremely rugged regions like this particular crater on the moon's surface, which would have been a suicide mission in the past without this kind of landing precision. Yeah, it didn't go perfectly well, but it went well enough for the probe to stay intact and functional at least once the sun was able to touch its solar panels. In my opinion, the SLIM mission has proven to be an unqualified success. It was able to set down with a great deal of precision on the moon's surface. All of its instruments are functioning now and will remain functioning for at least 48 hours, long enough to gather a considerable amount of information, and was able to deploy both of its rovers. JAXA should be very proud of their accomplishments, and I can't wait to see all of the data that SLIM sends back over the next several days and weeks. And given SLIM's unexpected recovery, I can't help but wonder what Peregrine might have been able to accomplish had it been allowed to continue its journey. What am I talking about? Allowed to continue its journey? Well, if you don't know the details about all that, stay tuned because I have a video about that particular mission linked at the end of this one. In the meantime, thank you very much much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Also, thank you very much to the 10 new Patreon members who have joined in January. So, so grateful to all of you. It makes a big difference to the future of my channel. And if you'd like to join these folks and become members of my Discord server, all the details are in the description. So until next time, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.